Hi there, my name is Alex Funzi and I'm an instructor here at Point Blank Music College teaching music production with Logic Pro X. And if you want to know a little bit more about what we do, please head over to the site. It's pointblanklondon.com. So I'm going to spend some time looking at Logic's Alchemy Synth here. It's a relatively new addition to the package. It was introduced uh, in version 10.2, I believe. Uh, the synth itself has actually been around for a while. It was developed by Camel Audio and uh, Apple acquired it fairly recently. So what I've got open in front of me is uh, just the regular preset that opens up when you when you open up the software. The interface, I should say. And uh, there's some brilliant presets in there. So I, I fully encourage you to browse some of them if you haven't done so already. But what I'm going to look at here is uh, actually using the synth as a sampler. And long-term Logic users will be uh, fully aware that uh, it's been needing a new sampler for quite some time now. So I just click into the advanced mode. What I'm going to do is actually drop down to the file tab and clear uh, and break it down to a basic sawtooth here. And uh, I've got four sound sources. I'm only using one, which is all I need for now. I'm just going to drop down where it says saw and import some samples. I've got some 808 samples I want to bring in here. Um, to shift and highlight bring them in. Notice there's different analysis modes, additive, spectral, additive and spectral, granular and regular sampler. I'm just going to use the granular mode and I'm going to choose the drum mapping and just import them in. And samples are loaded in and mapped to the key. If I just click on the edit page, you'll see that uh, I can zoom in and if need be adjust start and end points for example, just on this clap, if I needed to, I could uh, just trim it slightly. And I've also got the option to add loops and adjust those loop points with these yellow markers here. But I'm just going to turn it off now because I don't want to work with that right now and come out of this page. So if I just got a pattern in here, what I've got is these different controls in the granular mode. We've got size, density, randomize time, randomize pan. We've got this kind of delay type effect. You see the eight taps, and then the spacing between them, the stereo offset, and we've also got grain type that we can adjust. I'm just using this one at the moment. Now what I'm going to do is just bring these all back down here, and I'm going to actually map these to my performance controls down here. So if I could just control click, I'm gonna add a modulation, control one, it's gonna run through this quite quickly because it's quite boring to watch. Uh, come to that, uh, I'll leave these two alone. Actually, let's just let's just map this one whilst we're here. Um, this one goes to form number, control number four, I should say, and then control number five, which means that we can modulate using these controls down here. I'm also just going to drop in to the effects and you know, those kind of modulations, these, uh, the performance controls can be set up with all kinds of parameters within the synth as well. So it's well worth experimenting with it, but I'm just going to drop down here and select a reverb and just bring again, bring the mix down here, control and add control number six and then also whilst we're at it introduce a delay as well so I just bring the, the mix down here and then add that to number seven so now So I can go through this now. So on this, this is the uh, this performance pads over here. I can set this up as number one. And I can come to the second control down here and just
dial in different settings and immediately and go between the two different settings. So it makes it very easy for modulation later on down the line. If I move on to number three now, Maybe introduce so immediately got a few different scenes to play with there. Let's move on. Maybe I'll just leave that setting alone. Okay, cool. That will do for the time being. And again, you can really just go in there and obviously just spend a lot more time setting things up. But that's, that's that's fine for these purposes. Now, if I wanted to record that, there's two ways I could go about this. One is just simply to um, to automate this. So if I just turn on touch mode, for example, and just go into to play. We can record that down like that and then it's just a case of going back into read and you've got all the uh, automation data in there let me just actually get rid of that uh, and um, the other way which is maybe a little bit more controlled uh, is that you can actually assign controls to an octave on the keyboard. So for example, I mean, I've got my drums starting at C1. I could put some controls at C0, meaning that if I was to open up this keyboard and come down to C0, I can go through the different performance settings just by hitting the MIDI notes. And that could also, that could either be overdubbed or just Start recording, placing notes in by MIDI in the piano roll. So I'm not working that one, but you see the, the possibilities here. Just come out of that now and once you have created an instrument if i just drop down to the menu here and save as you can start adding it to your own patches so i could add this to drums and um, 808 patch for example i label that correctly or just 808 just save that in there and I can recall that for other sessions. So this is really just scratching the surface of what the alchemy is capable of. There's a, there's a whole lot in there and I thoroughly uh, recommend that you get in there and start experimenting with it.